So you're looking for a portable storage as a content creator. Perhaps you're editing on the go on a laptop and you're looking for some budget but still fast storage options on an SSD. And you're looking at some of the Samsung T7s, you're looking at the SanDisk external SSDs and they're all roughly around 100 pounds or dollars for one terabyte model and you're getting roughly about 1000 up to 1000 megabytes per second transfer speeds what if there was a way how you can actually save money have potentially even faster speeds and have much better endurance and here's where these underrated m.2 enclosures come in let me explain. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. So then when you're looking at the size of the Samsung T7s, or SanDisk drives or some of them. One of the main thing is that they are quite big and perhaps you're looking for something that is much smaller, then having these enclosures here is um, another way. Apart from being smaller than some of the you know competitors that you can just buy off the shelf, what these also feature is actually cheaper price. For example, if you're looking at the actual enclosures, you can see here this one goes for 18 19 dollars there's some of the more expensive this one here is actually 15 dollars 18 19 dollars so you can pretty confidently pick up one that's around 20 dollars right and then the other question is which ssd should you be using because you can go with very high-end m.2 ssds but actually that's not really the point here the point here is to get still the same speeds same endurance if not better endurance and even cheaper. So what I have found is that there is this drive called the Team Group MP33 drive. And as you can see over here, right now this goes for $53. $53 for one terabyte, which is absolutely ridiculous. Then if you buy a two pack of these, you actually save $1 and it's um, $104 for two terabytes. If you want to go with the two terabyte model, it's $158, which is not actually the best bang for buck and perhaps you're going to have to look for a different drive. But for one terabyte model, it's very hard to beat this SSD right now. And you might be looking at the specs and saying, look, it's only 1,800 up to megabytes per second read and write speeds. It's not even Gen 3 kind of maximum speeds. But the thing is, most of these M.2 enclosures are actually 10 gigabits per second enclosures, and that's gonna be the max cap for you, which theoretically means up to 1,250 megabytes per second speeds. So that drive's gonna be plenty for that. But let's say you wanna pop this later on into your PC if you wanted to, you actually get even faster speed than what you get on the enclosure, which is even nicer. And then the other thing I want to talk about this is the actual terabytes written spec of this. Now, these drives, one terabyte drives, come at 600 terabytes written spec over the five years, which basically means that you can rewrite 30, roughly around 30% of the drive every single day. So for here, that would mean 300 gigabytes every single day on the drive, off the drive. For example, if you're doing recording on the likes of Blackmagic, here, what I'm recording, I'm using one of these uh, solutions. You can record 300 gigabytes every single day for the next five years, and it's completely fine. If you go with some of the more cheaper options or some of the competitors, for example, Kingston NV1 or NV2 drives, which can be a little bit more expensive or sometimes around the same price, then they offer about half the terabytes written spec than this one, around 300 or sometimes even less than that, which just makes this drive very, very, very nice. There is another drive around the same price point. It's slightly more expensive, but I still think worth checking out, which is Western Digital SN570, which still has 600 terabytes written spec for one terabyte drive, but it's a little bit more expensive. If you put that drive in the PC, it's slightly faster, but I think for an M.2 enclosure, the MP33 is like the ideal drive. So what we've established so far is it's smaller, it's more affordable, because right now, altogether, these two 
the enclosure and the drive are roughly around 70 73 dollars so you're getting this about 25 to 30 percent cheaper than a samsung t7 for example now is how do you actually build this right you can go with all sorts of these enclosures but there's some of the things that you need to look out for an enclosure some of them are not very good operated and are not very good but this one over here is a new one from a uh, team group this is ec01 it says read and write speeds 1000 megabytes per second up to so it's usb 3.2 gen 2 x1 slot which is 10 gigabits per second but inside the box you will have the enclosure a usb cable which is nice actually because this is USB-C to USB-C cable but there's an adapter to USB type A as well if you want to do that. And then you've got some rubber standoffs. Now installing the SSD is super super simple and everything can do it. Look at that. So any of these enclosures will have some kind of access to inside the case. This one here has a rubber enclosure around it to make it very very nice. But also if you look around here there's actually a grill which lets a lot of the heat anticipate which keeps the drive much cooler than some of the other ones uh, you might have on the market and this is one of the things you want to look out for is something that has good cooling for the drive so in here you just literally take hold of the back of this and then it just pops off like that you can take it off and what you can and what you can see underneath is a thermal pad in here and then this is where the m.2 is going to get installed pick up your m.2 line it up in there it only goes one way can't go the other way it goes like a little bit on an anger angle you push it in it keeps sticking up so don't worry about it push it on that kind of angle so i'll show you on this and on this side as well so you pop it in on kind of this type of angle push it in and then different enclosures might have kind of a different way how you can install this or how it keeps hold of this but this one here is like a rubber grommet there so what you can do is just push the M.2 down and then get the rubber grommet kind of pushed on the side a little bit so you can push the M.2 inside there and then that rubber kind of standoff or thing there holds it down just like that and that's it. Next thing you want to do is make sure that you peel off this little plastic on the thermal pad so we can actually cool down the SSD nicely. There's this clean off pop it back and that's it that's basically installed hardware wise i'm going to pop it back into this nice rubber case and then you're going to take the cable that was attached to it plug it in there i'm sure this is very self-explanatory but right now i'm going to use the usb-c pod and then on your laptop on your pc plug into any of the usb-c pods okay i'm going to plug it in there and as you can see, there is a little LED that's lit up here on the team group. That team group LED has lit up. So now when you're on your PC or Mac, by the way, this works on Mac as well. But if you're looking to increase your Mac storage um, much more, get a little bit of a faster speeds because the Mac SSD is not upgradable internally. You can use these as well, but there's a bit of a faster way how you can do it on Mac. So if you're a Mac, I'd highly recommend you check out my you know, Mac or Mac mini or M1 Ultra or Mac uh, external SSD tutorial because it's slightly different thinking behind there. So I highly recommend check out that. But in essence, this SSD will work on both of them and you can do it exactly the same. So now once we have installed this, if you open my computer, you probably see that there is no SSDs installed and you're thinking, oh goodness me, something's wrong. I don't know what to do. Actually, this is completely fine. What we need to do is initialize the drive. So what you want to do is hit your Windows key and then type in disk man management or create and format hard disk partitions. When you open that, it's going to pop up straight away with this message here that says, you must initialize this before we can actually access it. So you're basically gonna leave it to GPT, press okay. And if I make this a little bit bigger, you can see all the disks here that are inside your system. But there's a disk one here, that is our one terabyte drive over here. And you can see this is unallocated space there, this black little bar there. It basically means that you have to tell this disk to do you want to keep this as one big sausage of a um, you know storage space or like how, how do you want to set this up basically setting it, setting it up as like one big storage is what i would recommend you right click on that section there 
new simple volume, you click next, you click next, assign the following letter if you want to change the, the drive letter, next. Here's the file system. If you're using Windows, then, then NTFS is, you know, the one that probably works for you. If you want to use it on Windows and Mac, then the XFAT will probably work a little bit better. We're going to call it uh, Team Group 1 Terabyte MP33. Perform a quick format. Next, finish. And boom, what you see is straight away, Windows sees, ooh, there's new SSD installed. And now this space has gone blue instead of black. And if we go to our my computer, you can see, voila, here it is. You can open the drive and then it's accessible here and you can easily just um, drag some files in there. Boom, did you see that? That worked very, very well. What we can do now is actually see how fast is this SSD. Now I have plugged it in onto this USB-C port, so I'm not sure what speeds of this SSD is in there, but we'll find out now. So one of the ways how you can do it is a crystal disk mark, for example, or you can get a Blackmagic disk speed test or something like that. They're all for free. One terabyte drive there. We're gonna put settings as NVMe SSD and we'll press go. Look at that, read speed. 1062 megabytes per second so we're actually getting speeds faster than what we have on the, the box here this is 1000 megabytes per second we're getting 62 megabytes per second faster which is 6.2 percent better speeds than uh, what's advertised while waiting for the test to complete you can see if you wanted to buy this separately and the cheapest, cheapest one you can find over here is like a team group one, actually, their own one, $84. So right now this is on a deal there. I'm not sure if we would reach exactly the same speeds there. There is crucial one, but this is 800 megabytes per second. So a little bit slower up to that is there is one terabyte, one 10 gigabits per second. So roughly about the same speeds as our here, $120. And if we are looking at the Samsung one, this is on a deal right here now, uh, $100. Now this is bigger. What's better about that drive is that it's a little bit rugged and IP65 rated. So maybe if you need that, you know, you can get that from that drive. But then we don't have that on the SanDisk Extreme one here. 1050 megabytes per second that, that is up to so I'm not very confident that you actually see those speeds there and then the Samsung T7 here again hundred dollars so you can see around 75% slower so about 25% cheaper option here and then the right speeds here 947 megabytes per second which is still very very fast so if you want to do any of the editing photo editing or something like that on the go, it's completely fine to do it with this drive. Then another thing you might be wondering is, can I use this on the Blackmagic, you know, cameras as an external SSD? And yeah, that's completely fine. You can completely do it. As you can see, it's fast enough to handle those speeds, no problem. Now I can feel that the drive is a little bit getting warm. And if I'm looking underneath the drive over here, that's where we put the, uh, actual thermal pattern is on the SSD. I can feel that this enclosure is, is getting warm, which is a very good sign, which means that it's taking the heat off the SSD, meaning that the SSD will run at better temperatures, which means it's not gonna throttle in terms of the speeds and so on. Now, if I'm gonna take the drive off and not gonna use the USB-C port there, okay, and use the USB type A port, which is like a nice little adapter there. So I'm gonna plug this into the USB type A port here now. Let's do exactly the same test, see if we lose any speed there. Bear in mind, you do have to have certain speed ports on your motherboard because not all type A ports on the motherboard are 10 gigabits per second. So if you're not sure, just try a different port, but usually there's a little kind of a sign on it that says like SSD and then 10. That means that it's 10 gigabits per second. Sometimes it's five. And um, so it might not be as fast, but most of them are like that. So we're going to press start and let's see if we get any different read and write speeds here. As you can see, very interestingly, it is slower. I can see 450 megabytes per second, even though this should be 10 gigabit pod there. You can see the write speed again, half the speed. So let's try plugging it into a different part here. And let's try that again. There we go. Look at that. Different part there. 
and then 1061 megabytes per second. Interestingly, they have a wrong port name on here. This says 10 there as well, but it's not 10 gigabits per second. By the way, everything that I'm talking about in this video, I'm gonna leave them linked in the description below. That is the M.2 SSDs and the enclosures, everything you can find in the description below. And now look at that, different port, 1060 megabytes per second and 950 megabytes per second read and write speeds. Now, what I like about this is that you do get the USB type A to type C options because a lot of the drives come straight away with only type C cable. And the thing is, it's not very easy to find a type A USB cable that is 10 gigabits per second written kind of uh, spec. Because often I have tried to use you know, type C to type A cables and they're like five gigabits or not actually 10 gigabits rated. So you're not going to get that speed. But now, even if your PC or laptop or whatever doesn't have type C ports, you can still use type A and get the speeds of this, which is just absolutely amazing. And look how small this is. You can just put it anywhere. It's like a, a two pen kind of size. Just put it in the pocket and there's one terabyte of storage. By the way, you can have more than one terabyte in there. You can have two terabytes if you want. But if you have two terabyte models, I'm going to leave some recommendations in the description below as well. At the time of making this video, what's the like best pricing option there? So you're not going to buy the same drive two terabytes model because it's actually a little bit more expensive than that. Because one terabyte is 53 and then two terabytes is 153 which is actually not worth that but we can find the two terabyte model drive per terabyte you'll get a better price but the point is if you want cheap external portable storage then this is the best option i would recommend anyone to do this instead of going like samsung drives there are some workflows and ways why you would want like something like that like the ruggedness or something like that but you can buy rugged and the two enclosure drives as well if you want to get that but check them out in the description below thanks guys for watching and i'll see you next time bye bye